I don't know how to start this. Hey everyone, I've got a, a weird kind of video for you today. Yeah, so this isn't gonna be my usual type of, uh, you know, scripted, highly edited, things flying around the screen, lots of math type of video. Uh, this coming week, or this past week, I guess, when you're watching this, I was away, so I didn't have time to make a whole video, and so I thought, you know what? Let's just sit back and do a nice and simple update video instead. And then I realized I literally had nothing to update you guys on, so I, uh, I went on my community tab, asked for a bunch of questions, just like for a Q&A thing, and I, you gave me some, most of them were about the channel or YouTube in general. Uh, so this is an advice for answering your questions about YouTube and also some other random stuff thrown in there. Yeah, so I got a bunch of questions here, don't know how long it'll take. I'm gonna run through them, I'll probably throw them up on screen as I answer them, so shout outs to everyone who asked some questions. All right, first question. Hi mate, love the channel. Oh, thanks. Uh, do you ever experience burnout? And if so, what do you do to tackle it? Your videos usually require a lot of pre-planning and I imagine if there's a lot going on in life, it can be hard to find the motivation to get things done. That is a great question. Uh, yeah, uh, funnily enough, I don't think I've really experienced a lot of burnout with YouTube, at least not on like a long-term scale. Maybe, you know, there's days where I'm like, oh man, I don't want to work on anything for the channel. Uh, but you know, nothing bigger than that. Honestly, for me, YouTube is like the stuff that I do when I'm feeling burnt out with, I don't know, work or other stuff like that. Yeah, so I don't really know if I have a lot of advice on like dealing with it if you are feeling burnt out, aside from just take a break probably, that usually helps. Um, but I will say for avoiding burnout, I, at least what I've done, it worked for me. I don't know if it works for anyone else. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm not the kind of person to give advice on this kind of stuff. I don't know, I'm just winging it. But I will say, if you are making videos, try to only make videos that you are interested in making. Don't make videos because you think it's what people wanna watch or you think it's what the algorithm will like because then you're gonna hate it and you're gonna get burnt out and you'll be like, man, this sucks. If you are interested in the video and you're excited to make it, then you're probably, you know, you're gonna be motivated to work on it and it's gonna be fun. And that's the whole point is to just have fun with it. Another thing, I don't know if this is like a tip that people can act on per se, but just a reason why I haven't really got burnt out. I'm not a perfectionist really by nature. I know a lot of, you know, creative people are, they want their videos to be perfect and that can lead to a lot of burnout because they're, you know, frustrated that there's like mistakes in here. I'm not that guy. I'm like, you know what? This video is not perfect, but I gotta get one out every week. So you know what? throw it out the door and we'll move on to the next one. I don't want to spend like a ton of time on each question or else this video is going to be too long, but I do want to say on the note of pre-planning, you would think that, you know, my videos, there's a lot of math, there's a lot of research that goes into it. Honestly, it's not as much as you might think. Like the lion's video that I just made, there was a lot of math in that one. Took me like an hour to run through it all because I knew in my head, like, okay, this is what I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how many lions you could pack into a sphere. It was a weird video, uh, but I knew what I wanted to do. And, and you know, I'm pretty, I have a lot of, taken a lot of math classes, so I, you know, know how to do it all. Uh, so it really did not take as much pre-planning as you would think. Obviously writing it and recording it, that takes a lot of time. Editing it takes the most time, uh, but there are a lot of questions on that later, so I'll save some of that. Uh, but yeah, I guess TLDR, if you want to avoid burnout, just make videos based on whatever you're most interested in at the current moment and you should have fun. Next question, what has been your favorite and least favorite part of being on YouTube? All right. Uh, my favorite part, I think, you know what, people are always saying how YouTube comment sections are terrible, uh, but I think my favorite part about posting stuff on YouTube specifically is when there's people in the comments that like exactly get the dumb joke that I was trying to make and like add on to it. I love that so much, like all the Richard stuff. Uh, whenever people, you know, j they get the joke and they join in the joke. Oh, it's so good. You guys are so funny. And also, you know, just making the videos. I have a lot of fun, you know, writing it and putting it together. That's all fun. Uh, probably my least favorite part is trying to figure out the algorithm. I know I just said don't make videos because you think it'll please the algorithm. And that's true because I'll be honest, you will never please the algorithm. It always changes and it doesn't make any sense. At least I personally find it super hard to like predict which videos are gonna do really well and which videos aren't. Sometimes I'll post a video that I'm like, oh, I think this is like, you know, pretty algorithm friendly and it's fun and then it doesn't get recommended a lot. And there's others that I'm like, whatever, I'll just throw this out because I think it's fun. And then it gets recommended a ton and I'm like, 
Well, whatever. There's also not really any good resources for like understanding the algorithm and learning about it. You'll hear a lot of uh, the bigger YouTubers say, oh, YouTube, it's all skill. There's like very little luck. You just got to understand the algorithm and you're good. Like they're probably right, but I have never seen a good resource or like tutorial on like actually understanding the algorithm and like, you know, tips that you can act upon. It's all stuff like, oh, you've got to make better titles and thumbnails to increase your click-through rate. And it's like that, okay, that's like a good tip, but like, how do you do that? Just saying your thumbnail needs to be better. That's not really helpful. Yeah, so that's probably the most, I guess, frustrating part about YouTube is that it can feel completely unpredictable and the people who are able to predict it, nobody's been able to articulate how you can predict it, so. All right, next random question. This is a quickie. Oh, oh, what's your favorite color? This is an important question. You know what? I know it's cliche. I think it's like the most popular color ever. I like me some good old blue. It's a good color. Uh, I like pink as well. Red is good. Uh, purple, you know, is fine. I like, there's not really a lot of colors that I'm like, I don't like it, but you know what? I like blue. Blue is a good color and I'm tired of pretending it's not. Next question, what video is your favorite to make slash are you the most proud of? Interesting, okay. I think the two videos that I'm the most proud of are probably uh, the building the perfect Pokemon I made a while ago and the one uh, which Paldia starter is statistically the best that came out right before the games came out. I think those two scripts were, I love the way those came together when like, you know, the whole thing is building up to one big joke at the end. Yeah, that's like the kind of video that I like watching that kind of inspired me. I think those two are the ones that like nailed that vibe the best. The starters one hasn't aged well at all. Literally like the next day the games came out and a lot of the stuff that I said in the video wasn't true, but that also wasn't really the actual point of the video. It was more like this, this one joke that I think was funny. Um, so those two, at least from like scripts, scripts wise, I'm the most proud of. My most successful video is definitely at this point still uh, statistically ranking every single Pokemon, which I don't know if I'm like proud of that video. It was my first time doing like that style of video with, you know, the more math. And I used to just do like regular basic reviews before that. Uh, so I'm proud that I like tried something new and it totally worked and it was a lot of fun. The video itself, it was my first time, so it's got a lot of problems, but you learn and you grow since then. Uh, so you know what? I'm glad I made it. Uh, but there is one aspect of that video that I am very proud of that to my knowledge, nobody has yet discovered. So, you know, uh, just a little hint, hint, if you wanna, you know, go look for some, some little secret stuff there, but uh, you didn't hear it from me. And then the one that I had the most fun making, uh, the one with the Koroks recently, that one was pretty fun just to like record and all the crazy stuff that actually happened while doing it. But I think definitely the most fun that I've had making a video was the uh, Champions Tournament that I did with Icy Richard, just cause that guy's so funny. We had a lot of fun, you know, recording the battles and kind of crafting the story, pretending to be like over the top sports commentators. That was a lot of fun. Next question, favorite Pokemon game and why? So most of my life, the answer to this was Pokemon Platinum, just because it was my first Pokemon game. So, you know, obviously you wanna say nostalgia, it's your favorite, but I gotta be honest, and I made a video all about this, uh, basically just as an excuse to say, this is my favorite Pokemon game. I think Pokemon Black and White 2 are pound for pound the best Pokemon games. They look the best with the sprites, uh, they sound the best, the music never misses. They're actually kind of challenging at some points. It has a challenge mode that you have to beat the game to be able to play, which is kind of dumb, but they, they put it in there. They also don't do the thing that frustrates me a lot with a lot of Pokemon games where like, in Kanto, the first 10 routes, you've got Pidgeys and you've got Rattatas and maybe one other cool Pokemon. So like people kind of have the same team every single time they go through because there's not a lot of options in the early game. Black and White 2 has so many options. You could build a whole perfectly, you know, balanced team before you leave that first little like side area. It's great. Next question, what content are you interested in doing that something scared you from doing yet? If it be the algorithm or external causes. Hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, I usually just make whatever video I'm like most interested in making at the moment. I don't, you know, I have a video up every single week and I have a full-time job, so I don't have a ton of time to like, 
you know, think about ideas and then be like, oh, do I want to do that? Do I want to refine it, do something else? Am I worried about it's not going to perform well or something? I'm mostly like, this is the only idea I got and I don't have time to come up with another one, so we're going with it. Yeah, so I don't know if like I have been scared out of doing something mostly because I usually don't have another option. Um, there's a lot of like collab stuff that I want to do and I just haven't yet because scheduling is super hard. Smaller YouTubers are the busiest people you will ever meet on the planet. So, you know, finding time to work with people, especially if it's like with a bigger group, there's some stuff that I've, you know, been trying to get going. I'm still trying to get going, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little difficult, but maybe, you know, eventually we'll make it work and uh, it's going to be a good time. Oh, there's also the gameplay channel. In the last uh, kind of real update video I made, I was like, hey, I'm having a gameplay channel. And I never did anything with it. But that's because that takes time that I don't have, you know? I When I started doing weekly videos, I was like, yeah, I don't got time to do, like, Let's Plays on top of that. Uh, but maybe someday that'll come back. I don't know. Ooh, okay, this next question. Uh, this next question is, is, is a lot. Is Richard real or just a figment of our imagination? Guys, I uh, I got some bad news. Uh, this this video is not canon, right? This doesn't count for the overarching story. Richard was never real. Yeah, uh, this is a one-man show. It's just me. I write it. I edit everything. I pretend to be Richard when I put in those editor's notes. It's actually just me. Whenever I point, when I'm pointing to Richard off screen, it's my, literally my closet door right there. There's nothing. There's nobody there. It's just me. I guess I should elaborate further. Uh, the reason I introduced the character of Richard is because I felt like it's easier to make jokes when you have like another person in the room to sort of play off of. Uh, but it was just me. I don't have like a partner in any of this. And so I created the off-screen persona of Richard to kind of do bits with. Uh, and I thought, you know, it'd be funny if he just, you never see him, you never hear him. And then uh, I don't know when I had the idea of like, oh, maybe Richard could be the one to edit the videos. This was a long time. This was like when I, you know, before the reboot and all that. Uh, and I thought, I'll, I'll grandfather him. I feel like I haven't done a lot with Richard in the videos recently. I, I kind of forget sometimes that he's like a, supposed to be a bit in the videos. Maybe next time I'll, I'll try and incorporate Richard a bit more. Oh, okay. This one, this one's a beefy one, but it's a good one. Uh, I love your humor and style so much. Oh, thanks. Uh, I've always dreamed of making content and having an audience, and I've been trying, but I always struggle so much with having motivation when it comes to editing. Do you have any advice slash personal experience with that? How much time you got? Yes, absolutely. Editing is by far the most time consuming part of making these videos. Usually I will, uh, you know, research and kind of plan out the videos on Friday write it on Saturday, maybe into Sunday if it takes too long, record it on Saturday or Sunday. Basically by the end of the day on Sunday, the video is recorded and ready to go. And then the rest of the week, I have to spend editing it. And absolutely you hit the nail right on the head. Getting motivated to like actually start editing is easily the hardest part. Like once you get going, editing a video, at least the like the level of editing that I do, is not that hard, it just takes a long time. But like being getting in the mindset of like, all right, I'm gonna sit down for a while and I'm gonna start editing this thing, that is by far the hardest part. Uh, the way I sort of break it up to make it feel less daunting and more easy, like, okay, I'll just sit down for a little bit. Uh, when I, right when I finish recording a video, I will put it into the editing software and just cut it all together. So no like effects or, you know, green screen or anything like that. Just, you know, edit out all the pauses, all the times I messed up and just have the cle the rough cut going all the way through. And then I know how long the video is going to be. And I know like, okay, if I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to edit this, the video is 20 minutes long. I just got to edit five minutes of the video each day. And that seems like more approachable than, all right, I got to sit down and edit this 20 minute video and just go however long. Um, so yeah, maybe that's my first bit of advice. I get this thing where I'll like, you know, after I get out of work or something at five o'clock, I'll sit down and be like, all right, I'm just gonna start editing this video and I'm not gonna stop until I've gotten five minutes of the way into the actual video. And then I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna go do something else for the day. Uh, but then, you know, once I get in the groove and once I get the ball rolling, I, you know, I, st I keep going, I keep going. Next thing I know, I'm like, oh geez, it's like 8.30 and I haven't eaten, but I've gotten so much of the video edited. So the next few days, I don't have to do as much. I know that's like probably not a good strategy to like rely on. I gotta feed myself or whatever, but I, I gotta tell you, it's freaking awesome. 
Uh, I use a program called Movavi Video Editor, mostly because it was not that expensive and it was just a one-time purchase. A lot of the bigger editing softwares are like subscription-based, so if you have it for a long time, that can kind of add up. Uh, but, you know, it's probably not as powerful as like Premiere or Vegas Pro or a lot of these other, you know, more popular editing softwares. But you can do like, you know, animations and effects and stuff like, you know, when I want to beaten up the subscribe button, I can make that work. So uh, for my purposes, it works just fine. I will say though, when it comes to choosing editing software, just pick one and start getting familiar with it because they a lot of them are really similar and editing from what i found it's just you just got to keep practicing and doing it more and you'll get more comfortable and more familiar with it it's all about just repetition i don't have any like formal training or anything like that i've just sort of been figuring it out as i go and uh it has worked so far if you don't have any experience with any sort of editing software yet and you're looking to sort of get more practice something to ease you into it Maybe try making Let's Play content. They're like, you could edit a whole Let's Play video in like a couple minutes if you know what you're doing. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of like crazy effects. You could just like literally, you practice just chopping off the intro, chopping off the end, put in like a, you know, an end card or something if you wanna get a little more fancy with that. It's a good way to sort of learn the ropes. Though I will say, uh, if you are doing Let's Play content and you wanna like, you know, make grow your channel, make it big, uh, it's going to be tough. That's a very saturated market. There's a lot of competition. So, you know, you got to figure out how you're going to stand out. But on the topic, though, of becoming a YouTuber and growing an audience, I, first of all, I don't know if I'm the guy to be given advice on this because I'm not. There's a lot of people who are bigger than me. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I have two advice that I've found so far, at least. My first tip is just have some patience because you are, no matter how good you think your videos are, even if they're, you know, amazing videos, you're not gonna grow an audience overnight. That's just not how YouTube works. There's so much competition. It's gonna take you, at least it took me years and years to get out of that 100 subscriber range, you know, 100 to 500 subscriber range. Uh, I think that's pretty typical for most people. So even if you're like putting a lot of effort into these videos and you think they're really good and they, you know, they probably are really good, but and not that many people are watching it, you're not doing something wrong. That's just like literally everybody has to go through that sort of, uh, you know, small YouTuber purgatory before they can kind of break through and then you'll probably jump up in subscribers a bit. Uh, that's just how it goes for most people. Uh, my second tip when you are just starting out, experiment constantly. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the YouTube grind. Oh, you gotta stay on that grind, that YouTube grind. You gotta keep on grinding. And that is, from what I found, like that is technically true, but a lot of people don't know what the grind means. A lot of people assume, they hear grind and they think, you just gotta keep on making videos, keep on doing your thing, keep on posting, and eventually people will notice. And that's not how it works. Like if you have been making the same sort of content for six months and nobody started watching it, chances are the algorithm has decided, no, this is not happening. What the grind really means, at least what I found, is you just gotta keep trying new things. If you try something and it doesn't work, try something else. If that doesn't work, try something else. Keep on, you know, experimenting, do whatever, you know, you think is cool at the moment. And once you find something that you enjoy making and people enjoy watching and YouTube likes recommending, then you are golden. You have, you know, you have made it at that point. But if you are doing something and not a lot of people are watching it, chances are they never will. And you know, once you've established yourself in a given niche, YouTube, yeah, they, it tries to sort of pigeonhole people into making one specific type of content. So you know, have fun being able to do whatever you want in the beginning and not have to fear about YouTube being like, what, that video is not about Pokemon? I will show it to nobody because you know, that, that that's gonna happen at some point. All right, very long-winded question, but we'll move on to this next one from uh, someone submitted on Twitter and it just says yay or nay and it's a picture of a bird's butt gonna be a big nay for me. Uh, next non-YouTube related question, do you read comics? I don't read comics and I don't really know why. I feel like I would really like comics if I got into them. I like, you know, the superhero movies. You know, there's a lot of comics that aren't superheroes, but that's like the most popular or most well-known comic genre. I feel like I would love Marvel comics. I just, as a kid, I, there wasn't really anywhere to buy comics near me and no one that I knew read comics, so it just wasn't on my radar. Uh, and it feels like it would be super daunting to get into now because there's just so much. But uh, for any comics people out there, if you know like a good place for a comic noob to start, hit me up. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll check it out. Next question, where's the Gloomhaven review? You know what? You know what, buddy? 
once you stop losing all our soul links, then maybe then maybe we'll talk about a Gloomhaven review. Uh, for some context, this is one of my buddies, me and some of my friends, we've been working through Gloomhaven the past few months. It's a board game, it's like a dungeon crawl kind of thing. I just recently retired my lightsaber wielding Sunkeeper. I'm trying to Doomstalker right now. It's a lot of fun, it's a great game. Uh, and also, you know, just, I, I may be in the one to have lost literally all of our pairs in the current run of the Soul Link, but yeah, whatever. Next question, what is Richard's last name and what country does he live in? I, uh, Richard, he doesn't have a last name because he's not real. Uh, the name Richard, I think it was an inside joke between me and some of my cousins. We made this like, this like fake ghost documentary as a joke when we were kids and we had a like running bit about uh, a like character named Richard who was always just off screen. I don't know why we picked that name. I think we just thought it was funny. And so, you know, that's why he's called Richard. He's got no last name because he's, his name is uh, Richard uh, Smith, probably. And uh, he's, he, uh, what country is he from? He's from Texas. Next question, do you plan on making more FNAF content? Five Nights at Freddy's? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, I'll be honest, I've kind of exhausted all of my very limited knowledge about Five Nights at Freddy's at this point, so I don't really know what else I would make one on, but I'd have to do more research. A lot of people recommended the sound illusion discs, which are a thing in the game, where like these things that emit sound that make the robots look like other things. I think a lot of people wanted me to do a video about like the real world engineering of these sound illusion discs. I looked into it. It's just magic. There's no real engineering behind it. So I, maybe I could come up with something funny. I don't really know. I had an idea for a video a while ago to like redesign Security Breach because I was watching a friend play through it and I was like, man, this game, this is a weird structure for a game to have. You know, it, that sounds like a video that you are interested in, maybe closer to the Ruin DLC release date. I don't know, who knows? All right, and the next question, what are your biggest goals for the channel for the next two years? So according to Social Blade, which is like a, a YouTube analytics sort of predictive website, I don't really know how they get their data. Uh, but last time I checked, it was a while ago, they said in two years I'd be at 100,000 subscribers. That seems very unrealistic. I think if 50,000 subscribers in two years would be insane. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm gonna hold myself accountable. Hard goal right here, right now. Two years from today, I, what's today's date? I don't know when this video is gonna be going up, but two years from this date. Goal for subscriber count. I'm gonna say 30,000. That would be sick. That would be pretty sick. I don't know. We'll see. All right. That's all the questions that I had for today. If you got any more questions about YouTube, I'm probably not the guy to answer them, but you can throw them in the comments down below. I'll see what I can do, or maybe if I get enough, I'll do another video like this the next time that I'm like, oh, I don't have enough time to do a, a video this week. Who knows? But uh, I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.